Thank you all for joining today. I'm excited to share with you um, a project that my co-authors and I started about a year ago. Um, so project co-authors are Ava Dizula from the University of Notre Dame. She's also going to be helping me present Eric Chang from Florida Atlantic University and Jose Vasquez from the University of Illinois. And our goal with the project was to think about maybe a new way that we could enhance student success. So we took some things that we know from behavioral economics and academic achievement literature and looked at how social accountability, commitment devices might be able to mitigate procrastination. And our hypothesis was that this technology we had that would deliver this to students, small commitment devices with social accountability might be able to increase their academic performance. And one of the pathways might be through mitigating procrastination. So as economists, we looked at the, or conceived of the student success as a production function. There's some inputs and over the course of a semester, we end up with performance levels of the students. And we also know that with respect to any particular input, we're gonna have diminishing marginal returns. So our first few lectures mean a lot, but then adding the 30th or the 35th lecture might even have a negative effect, right? So we were looking at finding a new type of input that we could add to what the course components people generally have that might actually sort of take us to a new frontier. So now we look at it like this, where we have a diminishing returns with respect to lectures. Then you add projects and homework, it takes you to a higher level. And then finally, what we're testing today is this micro commitment that we might be able to provide for students in order to keep them from procrastinating and enhance success. So like I said, we primarily or drew a lot from the behavioral economics literature and behavioral economics tells us that we have time and consistent preferences. It basically means that what we intend to do isn't always what happens. So we do pleasurable things too early and we tend to procrastinate onerous tasks. Well, in the realm of student success, this means students study too little too late. So you can think about a student who might have a an exam on a Monday and they're gonna study Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, they get to Friday and they decide that Saturday and Sunday will be enough. They might even make the same decision on Saturday to put off their studying till Sunday. So time and consistency can really have ramifications in terms of student success. And I, there was an interesting study done by Dan Airely and a co-author where they offered students in a course the option to have deadlines spread out throughout the semester evenly, or everything in the course could be due at the end of the semester. Well, as economists, the rational decision, right, is to keep our budget set the biggest and to have everything due at the end of the semester, which would mean we would have the most options possible. Well, what they found actually was the majority of students wanted the evenly spread out deadlines, and those students who chose that did better. So not only is mitigating procrastination enhancing student performance, but actually students knew about their time and consistency and wanted to mitigate it. And there's a lot of literature, I'm not gonna belabor, but there's a lot of literature that shows um, how commitment devices can <sighs> mitigate time and consistency. Did you see the result about COVID? I saw one from like three weeks ago, like 100 cases. Right, 640 new recruits, right? Finally, um, there is a study or a few studies done where nudging students doesn't actually show an increase in academic performance. So actually just nudging them doesn't necessarily affect that. So we're adding this element of micro commitments. So we use the Pro Habits platform to deliver daily nudges that takes the students to the action description and ask them to make a commitment to completing it that day. 
They can see their own personal benchmarks as well as their commitments of others in the course. And they will also receive an afternoon check-in text to see if they've actually completed their commitment and the task assigned for the day. The actions are focused on applying the theoretical material from the class to students' everyday experiences and really letting them connect. So at the beginning of the semester, students consented to participating in the experiment and filled out an extensive demographic questionnaire. After the first midterm, the actions were delivered to all participating students. Based on the existing research by Phil Oriopoulos from um, University of Toronto showing that the text message nudges really on their own do not impact students' performance. And also with um, an eye on our IRB um, clearance from the university that you can't give some students extra resources that could help their academic performance. We decided against using a complete no treatment control, control group. And our treatment group receives the text nudges using the ProHabits platform with the micro commitments. And the control group is receiving the same text nudge just as a simple text messages without the option to commit to doing that task for the day. So we observed their initial exam scores, the exam score after the intervention, as well as their final exam score. We had over 700 students participating in face-to-face -face meetings and instruction at the University of Notre Dame over four different instructors. We had almost 300 students taking an online class at Florida Atlantic and close to 150 in a hybrid course at the University of Illinois. And our empirical specification was to measure the effect on performance. So we're looking at the exam scores. Then our variable of interest is whether or not they were in our treatment group and had micro commitments rather than just text nudges. We controlled for prior academic performance, demographic and socioeconomic characteristics, and also the instructor in the course. Then we looked at this by course type to see if it varied across different modalities. We looked at this for different uh, performance levels for students, their procrastination type, and then um, according to their self-efficacy. So our dependent variables were the exam score after the experiment happened. So that would be in percentage points. And then we also looked at it in relative terms or relative to the mean as a proportion of the class mean. And here are a few of our explanatory variables. Uh, you can see we include the exam at the beginning of the experiment. Also, if they've had economics before, if it's a required course, um, and, then, and like I said, there are more um, explanatory variables. This is what we found. Overall, students who received the commitment device rather than simply the nudge performed 1.33 percentage points higher or points higher on their next exam, the exam after the experiment. But what's interesting is that all of the effect was in the online and hybrid courses. So there was an insignificant effect of the micro commitments on the face-to-face -face courses, which makes maybe this is, you know, a partial substitute for the social accountability that goes along with face-to-face -face courses. Then we looked at our results by procrastination type, and there was a larger effect, larger positive effect of the micro commitments for people who procrastinated relatively more. Also, in terms of self-efficacy, those with a higher self-efficacy level also had a higher benefit and then lower self-efficacy had a, um, an insignificant effect when, when they had the micro commitments. So we show that based on our results, the micro commitments may actually be an effective substitutes for the in-class reminders students receive in face-to-face -face classes that they might effectively mitigate procrastination and the loss of learning when switching to distant learning, which is especially relevant in today's COVID-19 environment. We are planning extensions to this um, research uh, in the fall semester and um, really incorporate this in more of a game-like setting, focusing on the motivation of students and how their position on the leaderboard impacts their motivation and commitments to completing the assigned actions. We also plan to pay special attention to gender of the students as well as um, gender of those who are on the leaderboard um, that the students can actually observe. 
So thanks guys.